Hey, what's happening? It's Mark here. Not in the shrimp cupboard today, folks. I'm in the koi room. Here they are. This is the inside part of the koi room. In the shed. So they can stay nice and warm. Well, partly warm throughout the winter anyway. They're nice and active now. Spring's bouncing into gear. They all come up for a bit of food. I'm feeding them some wheat germ at the moment, which is um, good for them this time of the year because they might be suffering with a few little parasites, trichodema and stuff like that, which we can, uh, which I will treat for later on. I've noticed a couple of patches on the uh, chagoy down there of uh, trichodema, which he's uh, been flashing a little bit. So um, we'll do that. But on today, I thought we'd go through. I'd take you on a little tour of the pond. Um, basically well about the stonework show you about the stonework i've done about the internal workings of the pond about the filtration side of the pond and um, the outside in the garden as well so uh, yeah we'll get on with that so i'm going to switch you off for a minute i'll turn the camera around and um and then we'll crack on with it i'll give you one quick look and then we'll be back straight after this. See you in a minute, guys. Just me and my guitar. Hey, we're back, guys. Look at those beauties. Come on in. Nice a bit of food in there for them, that'll get them uh, fired up. Clip that up. Here they come. Good morning. Okay, they're making some lovely fish. Really are making some nice fish. A couple of little bits of trichodema on them, like I said earlier, I think it's going to be a bit of a PP treatment there later on but uh, we'll let things warm up a little bit first get their immunity systems kicking into gear again before we do any treatment bit of back get a bit of uh, bacteria build up in the um in the filter again because that's going to be running quite low now so because uh, of the winter prod you know because the winter we've had and stuff so uh, yes yeah built all this last year early last year had a load of this stone up in my garden and um, decided I was going to break down one of my old walls up there and I um, and brought a load of it down here when I created this which runs all the way around down there as well I've got my UV system down there and there are the return pumps and the air filter for the um, for the Nexus filter outside, which we'll look at in a minute. I've got my sequence pump down there. And the flow and return pipes there. On this section of the pipe here, I had um, I had a heater, a built-in heater in there, but um, I don't actually use it anymore. I realised that we didn't really need one. I've got one in there, which is up there, which if you look on one of my other videos, you can see in the pond as well. Yeah, decided to build this into my shed. I said I had this part of a workshop before. I've got my other workshop next door. It's a 25 foot long shed, so um, so I had plenty of room. So I thought I'd build this. Always wanted to have an indoor koi pond. So I put the shovel in the ground one day, got a skip around, and um, and started building it. There's actually a slideshow on the on my on my videos here, so you can see the build, see how I put it together. It's a shame I never recorded it really, but. Um, I wasn't into this YouTube in Carry On at the time, so uh, I didn't sadly, but I took pictures as I went, just for reference for myself and for a bit of a keep afterwards. I was going to make a collage up and a picture in the uh, and hang it up in the shed, which I still might do. But uh, yeah, so that was the inside of the shed. Put it all together, put new fencing round. We'll go outside in a minute and we'll have a look at that. These fish have really put some weight on. Fed them quite well last year through the summer. They weren't tiny, tiny when I bought them, but um, well, a couple of them were, about three, three or four of them were. 
And I got that big one off there, off a friend of mine, who's got an absolutely monstrous pond with windows in and all that carry on, spent thousands on it. And um, absolutely stunning, I might show you that one day. Let me know if you want to see it. And I'll ask him if he'll let me show you. All right guys, we're outside. As you can see, the covers are still on the pond. Not off yet. Still a little bit, a little bit chilly and the temperatures are still fluctuating all over the place but uh, so I'm going to keep them on for a time being just to make sure we're up to, we're up to a decent temperature and also we've got all the spring buds in the trees up here as well which will um, drop a lot of seed pods so I'll keep them on so uh, a lot of those don't go in and foul up my filter not that great being surrounded by trees it looks stunning in the summer but we'll go out here have a little mooch around I'll show you a back shot of the shed there that looks like the thumbnail actually I put up on the video but uh, yeah the pond actually goes down two and a half feet into the ground below where you can see now with the woodwork finishes and it's uh, I'd say nearly three feet sorry no it's not it's deeper than that actually it's it's three foot it's, I think it's about five, five, five and a half feet deep altogether. Probably around six foot right in the centre where the bottom drain is. And that's a four inch bottom drain and running off there into my Nexus filter. Which I'll show you now. I'll put you down a minute. Aim you there. And lift the lid. There you go, my trusty bit of pipe to stop it falling and smacking me on the head. Oh look, some of my K1s decided to come over into that chamber, I'll have to sort that out. I'll do it while we speak, I've got a little net there, look. It does that sometimes, when I get a bit of a water raise up. But it's not an issue, it tends to float this stuff, because there's no agitation in there, so... Uh, it won't get sucked down into the uh, back up into the pump and chew that up. We don't think we don't want things like that happening, so we'll let them float up. There's not that many. A couple of net falls went over. But yes, as you can see there, that's where the that's where the water actually uh, comes in. Sorry, comes up up through there, through a big bottom drain, which is down there. Sorry, it's a bit bright out here today. That's the massive valve there. That's the four inch one that comes in from the bottom drain and brings all the leaves, rubbish, fish crap, everything up into, up into here, which then swirls around here, goes through the media, through a grill. There's lots of slices in there. So the water goes through there and all the bits of leaves and rubbish, fish wastes and anything else which falls into the pond insects wise that they don't eat goes up and gets trapped in amongst that. Then it goes through there, through that centre chamber, down through, comes up underneath into this outer ring which is a biological side of the filter which is constantly being aerated by oxygen from the pump I showed you in the shed. And then it goes through a grill in here and then gets sucked back down, goes through a pipe under the ground here and goes up through there inside to my pump and if you look right in the back there you can see that's where the pump is there so it gets sucked in there and then blown out through a black pipe, a return pipe in the shed. These Nexus systems run on a uh, gravity feed system so if you can imagine now the pond level inside the pond water is it's just obviously about two inches below this sheet now when you fill something up because there's a bottom drain in the pond the water then will create the same level inside this here as it is in the pond so if you can imagine there 
if you look, look in the brickwork here, that part there is level with there with the water inside. So the water's constantly at the same level as the pond. Now, as the pump from there sucks the water down and blows it back in the pond the other end, that means more water then from the bottom drain has to be returned to the filter. So it's on a constant flow like that all the time. So it's on a feed as it comes up and goes sucked up back into the pump and blown back into the pond. That means more water then gets drawn up through this main bottom drain and brings more debris up into the filter and it just re repeats itself all the time. It's on a constant level. So it's just one little pump runs it all. If that makes any sense. If you get stuck on anything, drop me a message in the comments below and I'll help you out. If you're thinking about getting one of these, but they're very, very simple to fit and install. I had no trouble with it whatsoever. Under there I've got um, I got a surface skimmer. You see a little pipe there which I've fed in and it goes down there and goes into the main drain. So it's on a constant trickle system all the time. So whatever gets skimmed out, there's a basket down inside there. And most of the debris then goes in through the pond that comes out of the pond, sorry, gets down into through the skimmer and into the basket, which I regularly clean out in the summer. And then the very slow drip overflow goes down that pipe, so it can't overflow out of the pond. It just overflows down that pipe and down into the sewer, which is very handy. So it means minimal to no water changes at all, which saves me another job, which is excellent stuff. I think we've got most of these out now. There's a few that have uh, surfaced again. We'll put them in. Couple in there. One on there. There you go. Yeah, so that's how this... Ooh. There is more in there, look. There's more. They must be stuck in the back. We'll get them out while we're here. Right, that's all them gone. Sorry the camera works a bit jumpy, guys. I'll level you all up in a minute. Right, more here now. Look, these things are never ending. There's not a hole in there anywhere, is there? They keep coming through. I don't think there is. But anyway, I'll get the rest of these out later on. Otherwise, you'll be getting bored watching me catching these things all day. Right. Let me put this net away. Yeah, that's the main drain there. Let's get back into some serious stuff now, folks. Come on. Right, that one there is the that's the actual um, that's the waste for the back drain. Goes straight into the sewer, which, if you look, goes through under the ground all the way across here, and it goes down into there. If you can see. That's where all the waste goes. So when I back flush this filter, which is another video on here if you haven't seen before, I'll show you how to back wash it, clean it all out. Um, so if you were interested in seeing that one, pop back and see that one as well. Right, I'm just going to pop you down again so I can stick the lid down. Without dropping my camera in the pond. Or on the pond, I should say. Right, that's the lid back on. My little laser there, look. Bud's all over it. It's going to look beautiful, that, when it comes out later on. And my little yew tree there. I was tapping in before, and there was so much pollen coming off of that, you wouldn't believe it. There's the big old bamboos, which are about, say, about 14 feet now. They are in pots, but a couple of people asked me, oh my God, you've got bamboo in your garden. It's going to be root uprooting your house, all kinds. But it's in pots and there's no holes in the bottom, so uh, yeah. Right, I'll put you down a minute on here and try and get you a tidy view of these of the koi while I shut the shop up. Yeah, the pipes I was saying about outside is that pipe at the bottom there. That was the one where I was scooping out all the um, 
all that K1 media from. That gets, so it's being drawn from there, through there, the pump's sucking it through there, blowing it up through this pipe here then, across the top, and then it comes out in that black pipe there, that's, that's the return to the pond. Now the UV system, which is here, I've got a pump in the pond, and it's sucking the water up and it goes all the way up that pipe there through those valves and it gets blown out there that's so the UV it goes through the UV as well so that's sterilizing the water I put a new bulb in that last August so that's still okay I'll probably renew it in a couple of months as soon as the season kicks in I normally put it on a bit of tape there and write it on in pen the date that I put it on so uh, I know where I am so I can keep up with it because that sort of stuff's important to keep uh, an eye on yeah this used to be a, a shed double shed here double doors obviously this was the patio sorry not the patio the decking which you saw outside which is down there which carried on all the way across all the way around so I chopped the decking off created the section of the pond if you look at the koi pond build you'll see how it was know how I cut it out um, took the two doors off which were here replaced one door put it there and then the windows and, and a couple of the other doors I actually cut down and um, you can see the way I put it all together again oh, it was a bit bright that sorry a bit dark sorry um, and created the windows I cut some more glass, put the glass in still got this bit of wood there to stop the wind blowing under and the remaining leaves which are in the garden but I've got a butyl liner in there which you can also see me fitting in the slideshow and a big uh, mushroom drain down there I was going to put one of the oxygenating ones in but uh, I managed to pick this one up quite cheap so I fired that one in instead in the summer I've got some big air stones which I use I will find it for you right there it is I put it on this bit of bread pipe at the moment I've got some black airline but um, a friend of mine had a bit off me so uh, I was using this for the time being which is a well you see by the size I've got big hands and it's uh, it's about the size of a blinking dinner plate that is so but I'll put one of those in I've got two of those actually I, I actually do use this one when I do uh, when I do a treatment to put some extra oxygen into the water while I do the treatment so the pipe runs up the back there from the uh, from the other pump and blows out through there And it takes any of the leaves actually that come through the skimmer outside. The uh, I've got the pump down here. Hang about, I just said something that I should no. I, <laughs> I do apologise. This it's the skimmer box outside. That's where the water comes from the waterfall. So all the water that gets drawn in through there, leaves, debris all goes into the uh, into the basket. That's the water then that comes down up through these valves and then gets blown across there and then straight out of there out of the, out of the waterfall itself so uh, that's how that runs off the skimmer and the main pump then that one comes out of that black pipe from the nexus filter hey i got there in the end guys my god i was confusing myself then for a minute put a new roof on the shed this year i actually used to have a little pot belly stove in here as you can see i used to come out here have a coffee while I was pondering on this on this pond build and uh, light the fire have a coffee and sit down and this is what I came up with that's not nowhere near finished yet I've got lots of work to do inside here this summer so if you subscribe to my videos and click that little bell button you can you'll be notified any any time I put a new video up and um, as you can see nature's creeping in look my next door neighbor's ivy variegated ivy creeping through the uh, the shed roof there I think I'll let it grow it's not going to do me any harm looks quite nice but yeah going to build a nice seating area here 
and box all this in because I've got loads of junk in here at the moment and I like to do things slowly and get it right as I go otherwise you do do it too quick and you always regret it afterwards and there you go I've got my little boat up there being an ex-fisherman used to work the English Channel I can't keep away from the water see it's in the blood it's in the blood guys it is where are these little chaps they've come up they've eaten all that food while we've been outside the fish I showed you I think on one of the uh, two or three videos back he wasn't looking too well he's not too bad now he's picked up a bit I haven't put any treatments in I think the, the food now has perked him up a bit because it's got garlic in it and that tends to upset, upset the parasites a bit they don't like that but they won't attach to the fish normally anyway when they're excreting that through their skins but apart from that everyone's looking really well which is always nice in the start of the summer you don't want too many problems when you start you get all these new pond syndromes and um, people in the summer they make a pond they fire in a couple of these uh, aqua pure ball bombs or whatever they're called pond bombs firing about 300 koi and wonder why they're all dead in about two months you've got to cycle a pond exactly the same as you've got to cycle an aquarium and it does take time patience is the key with all the uh, anything to do with livestock and you'll get more reward out if you take your time got a nice big fern in the side there which I'm going to have to take out and move around shortly all the uh, dwarf grass is there, hair grass they'll all have to be taken off all these plants are going to have to be taken off and um, dug about, take the small weeds out which will grow in the bulbs have come up, they look quite nice all around the place but a bit of a show, we've still got some tulips to come up yet small little, uh, as you can see, look bloody slugs and snails, I've put some slug pellets in here but I swear they're getting immune to them they really are, they really had a go at these but they're having to go at the leaves, the flowers have still yet to come out unless they've eaten the centres out which I hope not let's have a look oh it doesn't look promising in there but yeah lots of little weeds and things need pulling out got lots of other plants which are going to start popping out shortly as well that have been laying dormant throughout the winter what else have we got which is coming out so I've got my other racer there same carry on in this same story in this bed slugs I hate them look at that even got some sunflower seeds germinating here in the bird feeder I think I'll have them out of there and plant them why not birds have still got a bit of seed time to replace that shortly I think got to get in that pot there that's a load of old lobelia in there which I put in there last year which was all blue, it was lovely it was I'll have to put some more of that in again when it warms up a bit yes that was actually an indoor fern which I left outside and completely destroyed it I don't know if it's going to come back this year hopefully it will you can never tell it may have uh, may have wintered you never know nice little pine there my bamboo bench which I've got to treat this year and the seats as well me and the wife come out here and have a sneaky old whiskey in the evening yes looking forward to the covers coming off well guys that's about it for now I think any questions or anything you want to know about um, koi ponds or anything in particular that I can help you with don't be shy drop me a message and I'll get back to you I get back to everyone that speaks and drops comments and all that kind of stuff so uh, 
always look forward to listening to uh, what you guys have got to say so uh, yeah like share and subscribe if you like the videos for more videos like i say i'll be doing more on this as we go along throughout the year i've also uh, if you're into other types of uh, things as well i've got an aquascape inside of my aquarium which i do regular updates on i've got say uh, my uh, my shrimp cupboard as well which i uh, mostly focus on um loads of things on there so if you know anybody who likes uh, Japanese ornamental shrimps of different species. If I breed them, go and go and check that out, and uh, we'll tell your friends they can if they can have a look, and I can help them out if they get stuck because uh, I've got some nice little colonies in there now coming on. Right, my camera nearly fell over then, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to love you and leave you. You're all stars. Thank you every say every one of you, all my subscribers that have subscribed so far. You're all diamonds. It's been absolutely fabulous uh, watching the counter slowly go up. And um, I say later on we'll get into more uh, into more in-depth things as the weather warms up. Planting different areas and different things. Anything you want to know, like I say, give me a shout. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Just me and my guitar.